Good morning, church. Good morning, Pastor. We're glad you're here. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 is our reading in the New Testament, uh, reading through the Bible in a year. We hope you do that. We have Bible reading charts here, and, and I hope you're doing that with us. 80 hours a year to read through, 14 minutes a day for the average reader. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. So the workers for God um, were saved by grace through faith. Grace is a wonderful thing. Saved by grace through faith. Now, a lot of Christian lives, I hate to say this, but most Christians to get saved never about to heart anything for God. They're what the Bible calls saved as by fire. They're saved by the skin of their teeth. I mean, they're going to heaven. That's a good thing. But they don't amount to much to hear to win souls or to count much for God. They're just, they're around. Most of them kind of people never do nothing for God. I wouldn't sign an affidavit. I even believe they saved. But I believe... There are some that are saved. We then, as workers together with him, with him are italics. They're actually added words for emphasis. We then, as workers, beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard then I'm reading pretty good out my glasses today, but I do better with them. <coughs> For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in a day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Verse 2. Giving no offense in anything that the ministry not be blamed. You know, as Christians... Uh, we should be a good testimony, so we, we shouldn't be an affront or uh, bring shame to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Which we can sometimes as a Christian. But in all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses. Christian life's pretty tough life, it isn't a bed of roses. In stripes and imprisonments, this is Paul talking. He was, he got beat often with a whip, and he's put in prison often. In tumults, in labors, in watchings, and fastings. Verse six. This is Paul speaking about his life, the life of a Christian. By pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the arm of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, getting them saved, as having nothing and yet possessing all three. See, see that you can have nothing on this world and be homeless and poor and not have a home, but you can have all things because you have Christ. A millionaire, they have nothing because they're going to die and go to hell. They don't have Christ. They have nothing. O ye Corinthians. Now remember, the church at Corinth was a very uh, wicked church, a very worldly church. One of the worst. It was the worst church Paul wrote to. It was a big metropolitan city. Uh, it was uh, uh, it was on the water. Most big cities were on the water because in them days, you're going to travel, you travel by water. O ye Corinthians, our mouth is open unto you. Our heart is enlarged. Ye are not straightened in us, but are straightened in your own bowels. Now for uh, recompense in the same, I speak 
unto you, my children, be ye also enlarged. Now, this is the message today, starting with verse 14. Listen carefully, write, read on, and I'd read it on. It's today's reading, actually, so I'd read it over afterward. But we're going to teach on. This is the teaching. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Separation. It's, it's hard to even talk about today, but in Christianity, all through down the church ages, this being unequally yoked means that Christians ought not to marry non-Christians. A Christian should never date a non-Christian, ever. You say, well, she's a pretty girl. She's nice. She don't drink. She don't take dope. She's a pretty good person. But she's not saved. Don't have nothing to do with her. Stay away from her like fire. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. I'm just telling you what the Bible teaches. There's many a man and many a woman that has married someone. They were saved and the other one wasn't. And they had misery all their life if the marriage lasted or else it was divorce. Some of them lived, I mean, some of them lived life together and were just miserable. Because, I mean, someone that loved the Bible and loved God, how are they going to be 2B1 with someone that's not saved, doesn't love the Bible, don't work? I'm just telling you that's what the Bible teaches. Make sure they're saved before you even ask them to go out. Being unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? You see, saved and lost, it's the difference between light and darkness. I don't like darkness. You know, most, foolish, uh, most trouble goes on at night, doesn't it? I'm suspect of people that do most of their carousing around after hours in the dark. Huh? Yeah. You want to take a walk? Take it in the sunshine, not after dark. Huh? Does that make sense? Makes sense to me. Light and darkness. God and the devil. Devil, Father darkness. And what concord hath Christ with Belial? That's the devil. Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Someone don't believe in God. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. See, that's, that's the life of joy. That's the life of true joy and pleasure and, and wholeness and fullness. If you're with God and God's people. Many people sitting in there right now, you got a miserable life because you run around with the devil's people. You might be the devil's people yourself. I don't know. But I'll tell you one thing. If you're a true Christian and you're running with lost people, you're a miserable person. That's the way it is. This is admonishing us in 2 Corinthians 6. <clears throat> be separated from the world. Separated. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. My people. Someone, sometimes people say, well, that's your people. Now, what they mean is they're blood relations. Sometimes someone can be a blood relation and not be my people because my people are God's people. And the only relationships, the only relations I have that are my people are God's people. 
Oh, no. I, I've got people actually tell me. Most important thing is family. That's a bunch of baloney. Yeah, the, the most important thing is family. But you know what family? Family of God. You better get into it and hang around with people there in the family of God. <coughs> well, look at Philip here. I think of my brother Philip. He thought that the sun rose and set on me. I was big brother. I fought his fights for him. And I thought when I got saved that he'd get saved like nothing. He never did get saved. Died about a year ago. I hope he called upon the Lord at last, but I could never get to him. He came to Milwaukee when I run a mission there. And he ran an apple company factory in Washington. You know, Washington, state of Washington is big apple state. He said, I'm coming to Milwaukee for business. I'd like to see you, but you got to promise me if when I come, you don't talk about getting saved or anything like that. I said, oh, no. I says, Philip, you're lost. You're going to hell. How could I meet with you here and not tell you that you're lost and going to hell? You know what? He never did come see me when he came to Milwaukee. In all these years, especially in this time now, with um, you can tell when someone's calling you now. You know what happens? You just don't answer the phone. He had plenty of chance to get saved, but he was my blood relative, but he didn't want nothing to do with me. My older brother don't either. My sister don't. It's not a very good average. <laughs> three out of three, he lost. I think they're all lost. One died. The other two are liberals. What's a liberal Christian? One that don't believe in the blood of Christ don't believe in born-again experience, social gospel people. That's what I think Zoltan and Faith are. I'll send this to both of them. I don't think the born-again Christians either one of them. My sister told me what she thought her time of getting saved was, and it was foolish, and I said nothing to do with getting saved. Getting saved has to do with repentance. She's coming across an Oakland Bridge or something, had some kind of goofy experience and said that's when she is born. I mean, don't cut it like I ask people all the time. Why? Oh, I know I'm going to heaven. Why? They give me some stupid thing. They tell me something stupid. I said, you ain't going to heaven. Why do you say that? Because you ain't got, you don't know how to go to heaven. You got to repent. Well, I'll get there my way. You get there your way. No. Only way anyone's going to get there is God's way. Amen? Amen? God's way. Repentance. Remission of sins. What has agreement with the temple of God with idols? Verse 16. For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. It didn't say your relatives... Humanly speaking, are you people? They're your relatives. But my people are God's people. And God's people are separated from the world. And anybody that's not God's people, I'm separated from them. Amen. I don't go to their shindigs. I don't go to their parties. I don't hang with them. I used to, but don't anymore. Wherefore, Look at verse 17. Listen. What? Look at this verse 17. Look at it. Wherefore, come out from amongst them. Anybody that's darkness, not saved, get away from them. Get away from them. Wherefore, come out of among them, be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. What's an unclean thing? Unsaved person. Unsaved activities. I'm talking about Disney World. I'm talking about universal. I'm talking about the dirty show house. Hollywood movies. Yeah. Verse 18. 
And I will receive you and will be a father unto you, heavenly father. And yet ye shall be my sons and daughters, family of God, my people. Saith the Lord Almighty, God the Heavenly Father. That's it. 18 verses. Let's go on to chapter 7 tomorrow's. I think I got a little room to go here yet. But you know, actually, when the Bible was written, it was a scroll, it was a letter, yeah. but it didn't have chapters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It didn't have that. It's just a letter. So actually, I forget what year it was, but they broke the Bible down into chapters. But this chapter 7, it's just part of the letter, the second letter of the Corinthians. So on that behalf, let's just go into what they call chapter 7, just a continuation of the letter. Yeah. Having, see, it's just continuing it. Having, therefore, these promises about separation and being blessed, amen? Yeah, amen. Dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the period. Boy, you almost have to read that together with six, don't you? I mean, it's just right there and, 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 and really be ashamed to stop at the beginning of chapter seven. And this fits in like a hand in a glove. Verse two, seven. Continuation of the letter. Receive us. We have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. They're honest, holy people, God's people, children of light, my people, God's people. I speak not this to condemn you, for I've said before that ye are in our hearts to die and live with you. These is backslidden Christians in the church at Corinth. Great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my glory of you. I am filled with comfort. I'm exceedingly joyful in all our tribulation. For when we were come into Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Without were fightings, within were fears. Nevertheless, God that comforted those that are cast down comforted us by the coming of Titus. And not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you. And when he told us of your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind toward me, the leader, Paul, missionary, so that I rejoice in thee. Though I made sorrow with a letter, epistle like this one, I do not repent from the first letter. I did repent, for I perceived that the same epistle hath made you sorry though we're not for a season. Now I rejoice not that you were made sorry, but he, but that ye sorrow to repentance. Sorrow to repentance, Christian. This was to Christian church. For ye were made sorry after God a manner that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow, listen, this is a big verse, verse 10. Look there, 710. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. You see there? Yeah. Not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. A lot of you people, I have the sorrow of the world that worketh death. Because you're living in sin and foolishness and, and you're, you're all down in the, uh, in the mouth because you, you're, you're a child of darkness. You live in darkness. For behold, this selfsame thing that ye sorrowed after a godly sort with carefulness. It wrought in you, yea, with clearing of yourselves. See, when you repent, you clear yourself. You get right with God. You get forgiven when you repent. Yea, what indignation. Yea, what fear. Yea, what vehement desire. Yea, what zeal. Yea, what revenge. In all things you have approved yourself to be clear in this matter. Certain matter he was talking about that he reported in, in, in uh, 2 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 1. Wherefore, though I wrote unto you, I did not so for the cause that you might have done the wrong, but for this cause he suffered wrong. But with that care of you in the sight of God might appear unto you. Therefore, we have comforted in your comfort, yea, exceedingly 
the more joyed we in the joy of this, because his spirit was refrained by you all. For I boasted anything to him of you, I am not ashamed. But as we speak all things to you in truth, even so our boasting, which I made before Titus, was found true. And his inward affliction is more abundant toward you, while as you remember the obedience of you all with fear. I rejoice, therefore, to have confidence in all things. Moreover, brethren, we do the wit the grace of God bestowed the churches of Macedonia. That's going into chapter 8. We're going to stop there because time. Separation. Be ye separate, for I am God. What fellowship hath light with darkness? Why are you running around with drunkards? Why are you running around with sex perverts? Why are you running around with thieves and liars? You know, there's an old saying that is really true. Birds of a feather stick together. You hang around North Avenue and up and down Ridgewood here and, and uh, hanging around the corner with them people. You tell on yourself, huh? You tell on yourself. Yeah. You're known by your friends. Separate. If you're truly saved, separate. Someone told me about they were in a nasty, nasty place with some nasty, nasty people. And I said, person, why were you there? <laughs> huh? Why were you there? Reporting on these people that were nasty, nasty. That person probably nasty, nasty too. Because nasty runs with nasty. <laughs> darkness runs with darkness. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Tell me about them godly people you run with if you're godly. If you're a nasty, nasty, dark person... I don't mean you're black. I ain't nothing to do with color skin. I mean darkness. Darkness got nothing to do with color of your skin. It, it has to do that the devil is question of... Carl, this ain't time for you to talk. It's time for me to talk. Yeah. Who you gonna run with? The lambs or the dragons? <laughs> Dragons, devil. You better figure out who you are because if it's who you run with and the things you do, you're going to hell. You understand? Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what business? Light with darkness. And what fellowship had Christ with Belial, the devil? <laughs> Be warned. Be aware. Be aware. Be, not, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, unsaved people. Stay away from them. Get with God's people. Be children of light, not darkness. Amen? Let's pray. Lord, thank you for... All the way through the Bible, it tells about separation, light and darkness, devil and God. Thank God I was saved April 4th, 1916. And I run with God's people. I don't run with devil's people. I don't run with the wicked crowd. I say hello to them, try to preach to them and save them. I ain't running with them. I ain't hanging around with them. I ain't party with them. I ain't having fellowship with them. I'm trying to minister to them. Be separated. Touch not the unclean thing. What fellowship have light and darkness? Help us, Lord. Be saved and have a separated life. Some of you ain't saved here in church and out in the viewing audience. God's speaking to your heart. Would you get saved right now? Is God speaking to you? Holy Ghost is pulling at your heartstrings. Repent. Turn from your sins. Be saved today. This is a sinner's prayer. Pray it with me. 
Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross, rolls to the grave the third day. The best I know how, with an honest heart, I turn from my sins, receive you as my Savior. Thank you for saving me. Right now, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul on April 4th, 1969. Thank you, Lord, for those that trusted Christ today here in the auditorium. Thank you for the painting on our prayer benches today. Amen. Kneel and pray. Repent today. Got it all on our front lawn. Come anytime and pray there. Got it at our altar here. Kneel and pray. Repent today. Praise God. Glory. Thank you for these that are here. Help us to be separated from a wicked, evil world. Live for thee. For this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out. I'm going to let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out. I'm going to let it shine. What fellowship had light with darkness? Help us to live for you. Be children of light. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.